Hey everyone, team member Mark Sheeran here. Listen, everybody's been asking why we switched to the Skinner peep sites uh, this year. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of reasons. First of all, the owner of Skinner Sites, Andy Larson, was willing to collaborate with us to build the best ghost site for tracking on the market. And uh, he took our input and really put it into practice. And uh, the, the, the aperture, the ghost ring itself is thinner, so it allows more light in. Uh, it's all steel construction. It's got a lifetime warranty. And, and it's also a very elegant site. So uh, there, there are some other features as well. The, the ghost site itself is dovetailed into the body of the site, which makes it really, really sturdy, and it can't fall out of adjustment. And between that and the fact that it's all steel and, uh, and the peep site is optimized for the tracker and the still hunter, it's an amazing site. So you can go on to bigwoodsbucks.com and get your BWB Tracker Series peep site today. All right, good luck on the hunt. This is the Big Woods Bucks Podcast. Come explore the big woods and timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert, Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of big woods whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature big woods bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the big woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood, and sitting down here on Lake Parlin again with co-host Joe Cruzy. Hello. And Bad Lee was supposed to make it this morning, but he called and he had some kind of crud coming on last night, and he thought it might be COVID, so he got a test and it was negative, and he felt pretty bad this morning, so he didn't want to drag any crud over to us, so me and... uh Joe got a hold of Fort down on this one. But the good news is, back by popular demand, <laughs> we got old Garnett. Guy Garnett here. There we go. <laughs> popular demand. Popular yeah. demand. Well, we got some feedback after the last one, Garnett. Yeah. They wanted you back bad. Yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. not. The, you, got, you guys aren't getting any. How many, how's your deer stand sales going? <laughs> 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 uh, we don't sell deer stands <laughs> i don't hunt in them either so yeah <laughs> uh, you had to sit in a ladder stand at least once oh i i, I if you hadn't if i had one out there I'd, I'd i'd put them up for other people so yeah if i went by and there's i was tired i'd climb up in it but yeah so so uh we're into bear season now bear season just started yeah this is the first week yep so um Stephen Shans is working at it with the guys buying the business from, and I haven't heard much. They posted a couple, but the bears seemed up this way, coming pretty good. There's not much natural food in the woods, and it was kind of strange because it was a wet summer, but I've seen other wet summers where the stuff almost like the berries, like it's too wet, and they kind of like rot, like the raspberries were just kind of rotted on the on the vines, you know what I mean? There yeah. wasn't a lot of them, and blueberries are a little peaky there's a few here and there but there's no nuts there's no mountain ash there's there's really not much so they're hitting the baits good and i've got four hunters the first week i just take a few in there to remote i got four and they killed two on tuesday night the first two nights was hot and heck in the 80s when we went out and then but tuesday night they did kill two and then the last two nights have been the wind's been whistling so but tonight between tonight and tomorrow night, it's supposed to be nice. Other two guys will probably get their bears, but Rocky's boy killed a big one. I saw. Oh, did he? Yeah, I yeah. See that. it yeah. was. Yeah, it was three. It was three. I don't know. Three eighty something. I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Stuart Feeney's daughter's got some too, didn't they? Or... Oh, I hadn't yeah. seen that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah I see that last night. He had, real... had two of them, I think. I haven't had a chance to keep up with anything. I've been fifteen hour days since last week. You know, between trying to get ready and stands in and all that and then during the season i i bait every three days and then in between i'm trying to get the other stuff done i get up at five get going and i get back home from 
remote, taking the guys at nine at night and Jeez. try to catch up on my emails and stuff and flop into bed and <laughs> do it all, do it over, all again. over again. Yeah. It's that awesome time of year, though. September 1st is when it yeah. clicks over for me and my mindset. Yeah. A little cooler temperatures. The leaves are already changing pretty good. I mean, it yeah. almost seems like it's ahead of last, ahead of average. Right. Because it's especially when you get up in the mountains, I can look across those high ridges now and it's it's quite a lot of red showing up and them sugar maples get that burnt orange. To me, mm. they're the prettiest leaves. Everybody likes those bright red maples, you know, but those those burnt orange of the of the sugar maples there on the ridges. If you had, if you had a lot of water, you'll end up with pretty bright colors. Yeah. Most of Maine has been dry. Right. We've you had, look at other places and it's drought. Most of most of most places yeah. here and north right. and had last, a lot of water. The but. last two years we've had the we've had the droughts up here in the summer and southern Maine was wet, but it's was killed opposite. a lot of brooks, yeah. Yeah. It's been opposite this year. The yep. the river in town, you probably ain't been uptown. No. It still looks like spring runoff. Oh, great. I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, in, in all through August. When we give started, me two weeks, and I'll show you some giant trout. Okay. You taking I, me? I well, I'll take you. I got yeah. a, a spot nobody fishes. Like, everybody goes to the camp, go to all these yeah. other spots. I got a spot down below there if you got high water. I shouldn't say below. It's, it's a different spot. <laughs> 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 there's a spring, spring brook comes in, and then it's like the trout lay there. Yeah. Big ones. Yeah. <clears throat> Garnett agreed before he came on today he was going to talk about all of his favorite deer hunting spots yeah, and we'll antler you, spots and everything yeah, yeah 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 you guys talk about some of my spots anyways i don't know i, I, I cringe when i see here stuff like that <laughs> you've had you've had times when you guys are talking on a podcast or talking to somebody and they'll say i was listening to your last one a little bit and i heard uh one of the Benoits, I heard Lanny talking about some places. I wanted, <laughs> wanted him to shut up. <laughs> yeah, I got a yeah. story about his brother Shane. That's good and funny. Yeah, I wish, I'd, I wish I'd been there and see that. <laughs> I was sitting there in the bar with Mike. That's in the bar story, I guess. Had you Mike, probably have a couple Mike, of those too. He's huh? sitting there with Shane. Pretty and much like, most he, of his bar stories involve Mikey too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mike was sitting there, and I was like, I don't know, Pop wasn't there, but uh, we was talking. I sat down, and he didn't know I knew the Benoits. Because they, they used to stay down the forks, and, you know, I'd see them down there tagging deer and stuff. But then when I was a kid, and uh, he's sitting there with Shane, I go, these effing Vermonters are just wrecking it up here. <laughs> and then, and I, see, I see Mike's turning like that, and I go, especially, ever since these Benoits come up and pretend they can shoot all these deer and like that, and Mike goes, that he goes... He goes, I'm sitting here with a boon. I said, I know it's Shane. <laughs> like that, like, he knew it. Like he said, he started smiling, uh, real laughing. But uh, Mike was all panicked. I was like, yeah. I, was, I was watching Mike squirm. It was too fun, yeah. you know. I did it for a while there. So thought there was going to be a brawl. Oh, I, 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 he's sitting there and he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but uh, oh yeah, they they shot tons. Of, I can, like when you were talking, I, I listened to your cast there. I see him in around Ball Mountain, that same place. Uh, his old man come in and. Uh, no, it was Larry, you know, yeah. but uh, I talked to them guys, and I remember, like, they're going around the mountain there, and uh, I just, I don't know, I'm not going to get into that, but I saw, <laughs> I saw Glenn Feeney, and, like, it was, like, at the same time, and it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> end of the story yeah. end of the story it was that no glenn was yeah, good glenn yeah, was so good there's but one time when this happened i mean uh yeah um yeah, i just gonna, know, okay yeah. yeah i don't know if glenn's listening he'd, he'd remember because like we held our went had it so like our long licenses are up on the window and i was like he goes hi garnet and i was like i don't, I don't want to get into it but it was like stupid <laughs> Those guys didn't like wardens any more than I probably did. I was going to say. But except for I like Glenn. Yeah. Glenn, I like Glenn, and he was good. So uh, he never, actually, Glenn was really good. I had, had one time with, I was sitting there with Tommy Drew, and he come in and he showed us every picture of every stand, or like probably within a mile of my house. I was sitting there, and some of them had built for sports. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you never put a name on them or anything. And he's like, do you know whose this is? And I was like, Looking around, I, was like, I don't. And Tommy is probably the same way. I don't know. I, we were both standing there, and then I'd put that pond in behind the the house. Yeah. And, and Glenn goes, uh, "I see you cut off your escape route, Tommy." And he, Tommy goes, "I'm not caught till you put handcuffs on me." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stand there, and I'm like, I was, I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> but now Glenn was good. He's always, uh, you know. 
That's how you ended up into into that back country in there because I remember you were scoring his antlers and uh, I don't know if you remember scoring. He had a big set he shot out of his truck and uh, oh yeah, and yeah. Be there and, and yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I want you to tell a couple of stories from your childhood when you used to stay down the forks, guy. Oh, yeah, you They're not to... necessarily deer related, but people. I got a deer related one if they want one of those ones, but they uh, probably want anything. Oh, uh, would they? Yeah. Well. When I was a kid, my grandfather at Thanksgiving always would do a deer drive. We'd have a fam- my family's big, so there. But you didn't. Lot. I bet you didn't call it a drive. Yeah, I don't think they called it that as a push or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we didn't. We didn't tell anybody what we're doing. They all pile up into trucks, and yeah, you know, we had people well, actually. My grandfather owned a store across the streets where they tagged most of the deers, webs. Webb's oh, store, yeah? Webb's had a store, they had competing stores across the street, and my grandfather, but the, the Webb's tagged us in deer back then, but I, I can remember uh, we, every thank, Thanksgiving, we, my grandfather had friends from New Jersey, and it didn't matter who went, they'd all get into these, I mean, we're talking, it was a big, it must big, have been some deer big, killed on those Thanksgiving a lot, days. Some days, it'd be seven, eight deer killed, you know, but there's, or more, you know, it was just, but it, they shot everything, you know, I mean, like when I was a kid, I, I hate Deer pushes, deer drives, because I never got anything. You know, I just it makes you <laughs> makes you hunt harder, faster. I mean, like, yeah, they didn't. It's not, and it's not the type of deer drives they show on TV where they're pounding on stuff. Most of the most of the deer killed were killed by the guys pushing. Really, yeah. but I I was there when I was young, and like we we're always. <laughs> I told you how I shot, so I wasn't a stander. <laughs> <laughs> But I had one time uh, we were going to do a with push way back when I was a kid. Dad, uh, we we there's an old road goes down in behind Moxie Falls. Now there's a trail and yeah. all the uh, trail and all they have like a platform, all that stuff. When I was a kid, they didn't have that, you know. So we're getting ready to do a push along the river. So go down, you start at the road and go down to the river, and then we we're going to push down the river you know we had standers down it that narrows up if you look at that piece of ground it goes wider up by falls and then yeah it goes down narrow so they and had a lot of deer in there and there's a lot of deer that can be in there you know they might cross the river so they'd have somebody probably watching the river i don't i wasn't part of i mean back then like i said i was supposed to be pushing <laughs> and then we didn't have a radio so like kind of like when hal and i started there's no we didn't have radios to tell you know here start go whatever but uh so they always fire a shot, and uh, I so I was with my cousin Jimmy Robinson. He's a little younger than me. I don't know if he's a year or two years younger than me. But so I, I might have been twelve or thirteen. But he and I were both pushers. So we're walking down the road. He had his twelve gauge, and I just I was thirteen then because I got my thirty out six. But I had uh, I was walking down the road with him. We we were getting dropped off, and then. I he got dropped off and then I got dropped off and and uh, I look back and he goes we could hear the falls where we were so that part of it, and he goes let's go ahead and look at the falls so we, instead of driving we walked into towards Moxie and walked down over the bank there's probably six inches of snow during this day got down there and there's like uh, I don't know whether they're stalagmites or slag tights but if you ever watch Dead River Rough Cut when they show the yeah. there's ice hangs down off the side my cousin got there and he goes. I'm going to shoot those off there. He had a shotgun, so I stand next to him and like that. When he fired, I didn't, we didn't, forgot about, he started the deer drive <laughs> early. So my Uncle Gordon would come out and like, I'll, I'll tell the rest of it. But uh, he shot and there's like just barely a trickle of ice comes off. And I said, you dummy, you need a rifle. So I stepped in front of him. And then, you know, when you look at the falls, they have that platform. There's a cedars there. And I stepped in front of him. I had my rifle. I had that. I had thirty out six pump, so I I pull up, shot. My feet come out from under me, and I started to go off the edge. And I grabbed, <laughs> I grabbed, I grabbed his feet. He's like, like I, I grabbed his feet, and we started to go. And like I, I was like, oh my god! He grabbed onto the smallest fur you could see, maybe an inch around, and it started to pull out. And I was like this, and he's screaming at me, he "Let go of me, you effer!" And he started pounding me on the <laughs> on the head with the gun. So I, I thought I was going off the falls. And I looked down, and I was like, I don't know if you've ever looked over the edge, but there's a pile of rocks, and the pool's way out, uh, quite a ways out. And I was, like, debating whether I should just jump and try to push out and try to make the pool. 
And I said, screw that. And I just started pulling myself up over him. He's crying. You're like, <laughs> I had, I got up there and I pulled him up and I was like, you asshole, you know, get him up on there. And we, we come out, the st- we'd started the deer drive early. So that nobody, <laughs> we, can, we got out there and like, we're walking through and we walk out in the road when we're done. Gordon goes, who started that deer drive? He was all upset. <laughs> I'm staying there, big knots on my head. Where I, my, my cousin had beat me on the head with a shotgun but nobody got a deer that day on that, on that push uh, i'm just cracking up thinking of the, yeah. the the thought of a 13 year old thought it was a good you know just I, gonna pull his rifle up and start shooting ice off the floor. well he did it with his shotgun and it barely trickled i said you need a rifle and i, I had my new 30 out set so yeah that's right and that's the year that's the year i got my first deer like because like i was missing him with that 30 out six and my father gave me that 10 gauge to use so I got my first one was two twenty five and big eight point. I got that sitting in a, I was sitting in a pine tree watching. Uh, if you go down here, there's a lot of overgrown uh, apple orchards and stuff around yeah. town. And I was sitting in the pine tree about ten feet off the ground, and I had uh, that ten gauge, and I could hear something tinkling coming through the bushes, and it was a deer's rack coming through the pines. And when he stepped out in front of me, he kept looking at me, and I. Uh, this is another thing about scents. I just, this sounds stupid what I was wearing, but I still use it even now. It's good for bear baits and that. But I had to had a guy that's a bow hunter and told me anise was good cover scent and all that. So I yeah. was like, I was like, so I'm sitting there drinking anise and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> pouring it on me and eating licorice, and all, all of a sudden it's like that thing was out in front of me and uh, he kept looking at me and the wind was blowing right at him. So I was like. I pulled back my, like on the Harrington Rich and had a hammer. So I was holding the trigger, holding the hammer and pull it back so it wouldn't click and worked it up. And I shot it behind the shoulder. My father was wicked mad because I, I went, this is at the end of the day. I went, he goes, why'd you shoot it behind there? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't know. Because we went and there's no blood. He goes, we'll have to get it in the morning. And a bear had come out in those apples in between since I'd been there and puked everywhere. So he goes, yeah, your deer's gone. He's going to eat it. So I was like, all I was all worried because I I told these guys I'd shot a twenty point buck or something because like I mean, twenty point <laughs> I don't know it was just such a giant rack it scored one forty you scored it and come one thirty nine so I didn't didn't use that one I used the original one with the <laughs> 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 but it was like uh, it was you were within an inch so I guess it shrunk but it was yeah. like, anyways <laughs> I told I told them I said it had points everywhere but it didn't you know the next day the friend of ours uh, george mccord he just passed away he was, you know kind of i'm so i throw his name in there but he he said he'll go help and i had my friend steve chase i i got a picture i just put on put a bunch of pictures on facebook of i had a surgery so i've uh you know i've been sitting around on facebook too much probably <laughs> Better than better that, than porn. That, you know, that I tell my wife. Yeah. <laughs> after after this comes out, you'll have about ten thousand uh, uh, friend requests on uh, there. Yeah, I don't know about that, but it's, <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. That I had people wanted. I I would have guided for it, but I knew I was going to be messed up. And, Next you know, year, I've had a lot of people ask. So, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm taking out. I'm gonna, I'm taking your daughter, so she and I are going to shoot a big one. Yeah. And yeah. she's excited about that. Who's, she's like, who's well, I was going to, I thought she was guide because, like, when you said you're professionals, I said, oh, she must be guiding. I said, I said, I'll yeah. come up and help her for a couple of days. And well, like, it'll be the same thing. You'll oh, be training. I'll, well, you'll I'll be train, training. I'll train, I'll train yeah. her anyway. She'll go, yeah. she'll get, we'll see something. Who's filming who? If you're filming, it'd be a comedy. <laughs> 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 I told my wife, I said, if, if you wanted a comedy, they'd probably have me out there. They'd, and everybody be like, what not to do? But I. I <laughs> Like I, not I, to do, but I get it a deer every year. I don't. <laughs> yeah, you figured it out somehow because. Well, what it is is are... I watch these guys track and they do go faster than me, but it's because I can't read tracks like you do. I just I've had time. I don't know how many times I've seen tracks and I'll be like, "Oh, that's old," and I'll just start walking, and all of a sudden there's deer going. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, "Damn it!" You know, I, mean, I had to, down a few years ago. They used to feed them at Pierce's. You know, they. This should have been 2008 and 9. Remember when we had the two big winners in yeah. a row? Right before that, Ronnie and all these guys were shooting giant ones down there. And uh, George, George, you know George Poland? Mm-hmm. You know, he does generators and all that. They got a, they got a giant one with a boa 
in uh, one of those uh, tent blinds. Yep. Gordon, uh, not Gordon, Ronnie had them set up for his sports, and they had a stripper in there. <laughs> they, they, I don't know if Rich Whitten knew who's this one in here, but they had one of the Bod Squad, my Uncle Ronnie and George, and they got a giant deer with a bow. George shot a deer with a bow out of the, one of those. He had a picture, and it's like, you can't beat that story because I mean, like, the stripper was in there. Stripper was in the in the blind with those guys. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I shouldn't. Yeah, well, Ronnie's not around. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> George, sorry. Well, he got it. He got a giant deer. It was big. Oh, but they had uh, they had all these big deer down there, and and. Uh, they were feeding them, and my my parents had a picture show me. I mean, one of them looked like three hundred pounds. It was just giant deer. They giant racks, and yeah. And I remember I, I, my uncle Gordon and Sammy had shot at one. Like they'd been going in there and telling me that, and I said I got to go hunt there. I got to. So I went in on the road, in behind my grandmother's, and I went in there and I I saw two sets of tracks, and I was like found one of them giant, giant prints. And I was like, oh boys, it looks like it'd been I. I looked at it. And I go, it must be old, you know. They just, the, I hadn't gone two hundred yards, and I looked, and there's a doe running next to me, and I was watching her. And all of a sudden, I turn off to my side and going the other way. There's a huge buck. I was like, <laughs> oh my god! And that's one of them. I was just shooting off to the right and over my shoulder. So I was, I tried it, but I missed it. So yeah. But so was, so we were talking about that a little bit before the podcast shooting. about trying it. Yep. Yeah, so so explain your philosophy. My philosophy? I mean, I joke about my shooting, but I can shoot. I just, my my theory is just like the first time you shoot your deer, if you got it one hop or two hops, that's when you got a shot and you see the rack, you try it. Because I either going to get it or you miss. I've, I don't, I either, you know, I've had enough times where I've hit them when it's happened like that, that it's, if you don't try it, you're never going to get it. That was what Ronnie had yeah. taught me. And if you don't, I, I hear all kinds of people that won't take a running shot, then you can't hunt the way I do then because I still hunt and I, I yeah. track and I, I mix everything. Like I said, if you're sitting, yeah, you can wait for that perfect shot. If you're up in the tree seed or, you know, like I said, you guys aren't so many of those because of me. But, uh, you know, if you're in the tree seat, you gotta, you'd have that shot because like, you wait for it. But if you if you wait for it and I Hal's got their got it right. I mean, he tells you to wait. If you got a deer up and moving, you got a better chance. Deer laying there, and then yeah. you know if they're up and moving, then you got a chance. But Do you just you like me? You just swing with it. I swing with it. it. I don't. I mean, I hear people say, "Oh, aim in front of it, wait for it to hit an opening." I swing with the gun. I swing just as if I was shooting at a partridge flying. Yeah. Yeah, that's I don't, the way I do and it. And I don't lead or do anything. I just put it I put it behind the shoulder and let her fly. Let her rip. Yeah, and I mean like a lot of times like keep I, swinging. I'm, I'm going to yeah, I'm probably going to, you know, I probably I, you guys are selling your peep sights. I probably need to put one on and I'd recommend anybody that if you're not able to stay in your sight, then you got to do that. I mean yeah. I I can tell you like I mean I joke about my shooting, but when I was 21, when I was a forest ranger, I remember going so I've, in 1989, 90, there I went to a running the Callus Rod and Gun Club, and I won a couple turkeys with the other people's guns. You know, I won a I won a trap shoot first time. You know, a guy had this guy named Larry Mahar had a insurance company down there, and he let me. He was a Brown and Chatori. It was had gold in the lane. I I won the trap shoot with that, and then he let me use his rifle, and I run the running deer shoot with his rifle. But I mean. Uh, Thing is, that in the woods, they're not like that. You know, you get one hop and, you know, like you may never see them. And like a lot of times you'll see that deer get up out of his bed and that if you don't try, that might be the only yeah. time you see them. In a lot of my history, that is, I didn't, way back, I didn't stop like Hal, Hal's one that told me that. He lets them wait and it works, you know. Because when I was telling you the last time about running, if you run as hard as you can for 100 yards and stop, or not 100 yards, but for a minute. That's what a deer runs, about a minute. He's just going to stand there and watch what was behind him if he didn't know what was there. Yeah. So. Oh, you mean stop. Yeah, wait, wait a I half mean, an hour. Like, yeah, I mean, like for me, I waited uh, that. I'd run as hard as I could at an angle, and then I'd drop on one knee, and I'd just watch in front of me for probably half an hour. Not yeah. not purposefully thinking to do it. Yeah. But I I know a deer, if you go that same amount of time, that's how far they're running, and then they're like, what the hell was that behind me? And it takes... You know, for them to, unless they smelt you, I mean, if they just, then they know what's behind them. But if they, they waiting to see if you're coming, 
And if they don't, then they start on their way. A lot of times, you, you know. So. Yeah. Most of the time, they, they go because they hear a twig snap yeah. or they something close. They yeah. might catch a little motion and they don't know what it is. They just want to get out of the way and yep. immediate danger and then wait and see. See if something's coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you see where they stand there and watch it. So my father, when I was a kid, had some of the things that you don't see even ever talk about, but the old tricks they'd have, like everybody wants to hunt like your sport. I'd either put them off the side. If you had a really good hunter, put them behind you. Because, <laughs> yep. like, I mean, go back 100 yards behind you, people don't realize a lot of those deer that you see that go like that, they're coming around, you yep. know. So if you have somebody in those, my father always used to have me back. I'd see deer, but I, like I said, when the, when I first started, I don't think I aimed. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know, I didn't it really took having the shotgun. That year when I was 13, my grand, my uh, my parents, I studied like hell so I could go up and uh, they let me go trapping with Gordon for a week. And I went up there and, and uh, we trapped and hunted. It was a blast because, like, he used to, he'd do traps and, like when it was dark or picking, you know, like in between places we'd hunt, you know, and I'd watch him, him and Gordon hunt two different, completely different, really, because even though they learned from the same person, Warren Ricker, like my uncle Gordon likes to see different country. He'd hunt one place, and my uncle, my uncle Ronnie, when I hunted with him, the next year they let me go with Ronnie, which is surprising. Cause he's like, <laughs> but he was married to Liz then, so my my aunt, you know, and so I, they let me go up and spend a week with him, and. Well, I learned a lot about how he hunted, and that was his his hunting was like you know one day to learn the learn the country and where you're at. Two days you should be learning the deer, and if you're not killing a deer within three days, you're walking blindfold again. That's what he basically would tell me. Yeah, you know he goes you need to hunt the same places, and Gordon just likes to like Gordon to, he gets deer, you know. But I mean he he likes to see different country. He knows so many different places, so that's fun too, you know, to go to different places and. Yep. Yeah, but he's like, you know, like, yeah, but the Gordon uh, next year when I went with Ronnie, he's he's the one that you know, like I thought, like I was Daniel Boone then because I got that two hundred twenty five pounder, and, but he had uh, he's the one that all the little tricks that made me more successful have nothing to do with like skills. Is I he shot a deer in front of me and one of my sports and one of his or maybe one of his sports I don't remember, but I was like I've just killed a deer and there's the buck's gone you know. Yep. No, I don't know why I'm going to keep hunting here. I was all disappointed. And he's like this, and he goes, Garnet, every doe in here is going to get bleeped. You know, he didn't say it <laughs> a nice way. <laughs> you know, he goes, and he goes, there's a bigger buck over that hill. He goes, you can't, you don't stop because of that. You know, like I can be negative about a thousand things. Right now we're all about to turn communist. They want to get our guns or whatever. But comes deer hunting, I know, I absolutely know I'm going to see something. Oh, and yeah. I and like and that's the other thing he told me that made me better, is that he goes every single day you're in the woods you're gonna be within an eye shot of a, a big buck, you're gonna be someplace the way we hunt you know if you're sitting right. if you're sitting that's not true yeah. <laughs> you know if you guys are sitting in a stand that's not true, but if you're out still hunting or whatever you have I have it in my mind there's every you know and it's always one second you know you're that's you're it. from there to you're going from nothing to where he is you know and the, Every single day, I know that I'm in. I'm within. Him. His whole thing was. He goes every day. You're gonna see. You're in. You're in sight of a big buck if you're out in the woods. And he goes, "It's your job to see him first. Yeah. You know. And that was right. that was his whole thing. And like, that was a good way to put it. Actually. It is. Yeah. He told me that. Those are the two things. And I'm telling you what. He made me the most successful. He shot way thousands more deer than I did ever dream of. And Gordon, same way. But I like uh, I got way more deer because of him telling me that. The other thing was my grandfather told me. He goes, he goes, you're all looking over your deer, and I was like, what are you talking about? He's like that. He goes, look at uh, you go look at a buck, look at anything where they go under and what they do. They're they're up on their shoulder. There ain't much different on the height of a deer. Like when you're looking at off the ground, he goes, right. it's just the length of them, you know. So that's when you're looking at the stride and all that. He goes, you watch where those bucks, you put the leg out and they'll go underneath us, something, you know, like, I don't know if you watch when they oh, walk yeah. the logs, a lot of times they'll put their leg out to the side and they'll go down, but they're going under the same places as those does are a lot of times. They don't always not, and you'll watch, and he's right, you know, or if they're laying there on the ground, so I, I'm constantly looking down and out, down and out yeah. to where I'm going, so. 
you know, and that's the the thing, the reason I hate deer driving, like when I talked about deer drives, is I've never got deer because I'm always trying to keep up with what other people are doing. Like if I watched like Rick or Hal that can judge tracks better than, you know, everybody really. But, uh, you know, people that can judge tracks with how old they are, I, I know I can't because like I'll... I don't know how many times I've just gone out and jumped deer by not, you know, I'll be going too fast. So I hunt the opposite of what most of you guys do. Like, I'm not getting the 15 miles or, I mean, I mean I've had times I've gone 10 or 12 miles because I'll go four or five miles and then have to go home. <laughs> you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I hunt slower. And same thing, I get up on hardwoods. I don't know how many times I've watched. Actually, I can tell a story about when I... And tell how when I shoot fast, it causes problems. <laughs> I, had, uh, I was hunting with Fuzzy and uh, Ron McKenzie and up above uh, Kelly Dam Road. That, that pup, actually, actually, it's where, uh, oh, who's got the deer? The, they sure. put a sugar bush in there now. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy's put one in behind that piece of. Uh, right, the public land, yeah. That public land, we went in on that winter road, and Ron McKenzie and I don't remember if it was Corey or whoever, but somebody went up on there. They were going in on Blake Gore, and uh, we were going to hunt below them, hunt across to that uh, other sugar bush. I can't remember. That sugar bush was there then. They had a the little bridge. Um, oh, you know, I've forgotten his name now. Claude. Claude, yeah. Well, yeah. I was like, uh, so I was there and walked in with uh, Fuzzy. He's the only one I thought was above me, and where was all the snow, so you could look out through the hardwoods that were there. And, I was the lowest guy. I was hunting down closer to the Kelly Dam and all that. And I started across, and I hear some pile of shooting above me. And I was like, and I looked, and a buck come running down, leg flopping. I come running down through those hardwoods, and then uh, stopped, and I couldn't see it. You know, I stood there for quite a while, and I was like looking. So I, you know, like I watching that, I couldn't see him. I was like, what the hell? How did I just watched him running? And I was like looking, and then he started again, and I shot him. And I saw, I was like, and then I walked over there and I see two guys coming and I was like, I thought it was fuzzy. And I go, well, you can shoot them now in the ass. Cause you know, like they <laughs> shot so many times and I'd only hit it like in the leg and there's like, you'd see it. And all of a sudden I looked and I was looking at Randy Peachin's brother <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, and then somebody else, one of their sports or something. And they're like, that's our deer. And I, by then Ron and, and Carrie showed up and they're like, that's yours. You shot. I'm like, I'm not, it's their deer. Let them have it. You know, we're a mile in here. And I said, doesn't matter. Technically I know Mr. Warden, <laughs> That would have, you know, like I wouldn't do that now. I'd take it. But <laughs> back then, I yeah. just like I didn't want to argue about a, a deer. I was wounded, you know. So yeah. I, but we walked out, and I had uh, those little nips <laughs> in the truck. I, they go, "What are you doing?" You said, and I said, "I'm celebrating." I said, "I, I should oh, one. I didn't have to drag it, and I didn't have to tag it." And I said, "I'm gonna go get an. I'm gonna go get another one like that." And we drove down, and we went down. And I never hunted this other spot. We went down the. Down uh, below Kelly Dam, going towards town, and I think Sandy Bay, is that off the, the Sandy Bay Mountain? There was yeah. a cut, and there's a bog over there, and there's another cut on this side they were going to hunt in. I'd never hunted there, and I went up. They had radios, so Fuzzy, you know, all three of them had radios at this time. I didn't have a radio. I was in there just walking around. And I come out, and I could hear them at the truck. It was Ron, and they were going to go road hunting, and I I was looking at him. I said, I'm going over on that other ridge over there. And so they gave me one of the radios because they were going to leave me with uh, Fuzzy, you know, Carrie Haggerty. And I, I went across the road, and I got over there, and it's snowing hard. And I got out on the other side. I, as soon as I got on there, I jumped in the twitch trail. I jumped a doe. She ran, and a big buck goes right behind her. And I was like, I ran just as hard as I could for two twitch trails over. And I was looking up as I was going. All of a sudden, I see her standing there. I was like, oh, she's right there. And I was looking around, looking around for the buck, and I hear the burt, 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 burt. I was like, he's grunting as he's coming. I was like that. I look, I see antlers sticking up in the furs, and then I see the body in there. Shot. All of a sudden, giant buck goes across the, the twitch trail. I was in. I just, I was like, what the? Because I just shot it. <laughs> I just like this, and I shot. And I, and I, and I go over there. I shot a, a crotch horn. <laughs> it's like probably <laughs> ten inches over his head, and I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like that because I didn't expect. And then uh, when Carrie, I don't know if you're, he's really good woodsman, but he's like, uh, "Was that you that shot one point mile or two miles?" I was like, "I go if you just heard a shot, 
care. It's me. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, and then he come down, and I was begging him to really to tag it. You know? <laughs> I was just gonna ask you that. Yeah. Well, I ended up. We went back to town, and I, was, I was sitting at the bar, and the, and then Ron McKenzie come in, and I was like, he goes, the, didn't say anything. I said, yeah, I shot another one. He's like, bullshit. Because he's like, okay. I, I said, yeah, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted, but. He would have been happy with it probably, but I was like, I was like, boys, oh boys, that's being fast on the trigger. Sometimes don't don't work. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I I knew it was a buck there, and I didn't expect other. Hey Hal here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our partnership with Onyx Hunt. Um, I've been using it for a while now, and if anybody knows me, they know I'm not a very techie person. But the Onyx app is really. It's a real time saver. I remember the days when we poured over topo maps everywhere we was going to go and stuff, and I don't, uh, I don't do that quite as much anymore. Where it's really helped me is, is uh, scouting, you know, whether it's deer scouting, a moose, or even turkey hunting in the spring, which I do. It, uh, it really helps out. I don't have to spend as much time running around the truck, burning up the gas. I, uh, I'm just basically using my Onyx. Got it on my phone. Don't even carry a GPS anymore. So uh, I just download the areas where I'm going to be hunting, whether it's up north moose hunting. And and uh, I use it mostly on the uh, satellite imagery. I like to see the, the cuts and the clearings and the turkey hunting, the hidden fields and stuff. But uh, everybody's using it now from the game wardens to the to uh, land surveyors and and uh, just a great tool. And uh, with our partnership with with uh, Onyx, if you use a code BWB, you're going to receive 20% off on your first premium or elite memberships. And you just go to onyxmaps.com slash hunt. You'll be glad you did. Good luck on the trail. Hey, all you listeners out there, here's a great job opportunity for you. Wireless Construction out of Standish, Maine is looking for some new employees. A great two-decade-old company, and they have opportunities in steel fabrication, civil technician, tower technician, tower welders, and fabricators, and outdoor voyages. It's my kind of job. Experience is a plus, but not a requirement, and they have great a, a great benefit package with dental, health, vision, 401k, long and short-term disability, life insurance, paid time off. Living expense per diem when applicable, a $300 tool and gear allowance. Geez, I might get a job there by the looks of this. If you have any interest, which I think some of you might, you can contact Darcy Weber at 207-642-5751. Or you can email him at employment at wcitowers.com. Hope you get your job. You a little excitable sometimes, Garnett? Super excitable, huh? <laughs> yeah, I've had that. Well, I had that another time. I had that exact same thing happen. Not the exact. It's the opposite of that, actually. I was sitting on a ridge, and you could. This is. I was pretty young. I was like. Uh, I was old enough to hunt by myself. But I had the friend Steve Chase. I had. Uh, I got a picture of him. I put up in this. He's passed away from cancer not too long ago. But he's a. Uh, uh, he he was there with. He was well. He wasn't there with me. I was there by myself, and I could look down, and I, I could see into a cut, and then on the other side, I could see a ridge, just like coming up. And I'm sitting there, uh, quite a while, like probably an hour, and right before dark, and all of a sudden, I could see a buck on the far side, and uh, it's a long ways for like I'm not good at like when I say I can shoot stuff that's moving, I'm not good at long shots. We have to think because you look out through there and you see the crosshairs move in and you know I was like I have open sights and I have crosshairs and I was all looking at the crosshairs and they're bobbing all around while well, I shot he ran down in the firs and all of a sudden there's deer going everywhere and I shot the first deer that come out and they're Bang! like that and I go jeez I never heard a buck do that <laughs> and so I shot, I shot a button buck <laughs> oh. and I went down this is when I was a kid and I went down and I looked I go oh my god and I, like I saw that and I was like, took like th- two more shots I had shot and I got it behind and then you're still laying there I just like oh my god I felt so bad because it kept screeching and uh, <laughs> that, it, yeah, yeah and the mother was there and then oh. I looked when I got there with the deer I was like looking at it I see the buck I killed it 
like probably 30 yards away. <laughs> so I was sitting there with both of these deer, not meaning to have done that, you know. But I was like, so I started to gut it, and then uh, there's a, oh, I've forgotten their names. But uh, <laughs> I was there, and somebody come down, and they go, you need help? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, oh, I forgot their names. They had a machine gun factory there, and just down Dexter. So I was like, I half gutted this little deer, and I was just going to leave it and go back and get it. And uh which I would never do again, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I was dragging it. I started dragging it cause they was coming down to uh, help me. And, uh, I was like, Oh my God. I'm, you know, like, so they hit and I was like, I don't need help. I was like, so little, they helped me all the way out to my truck. So I drive down to the tagging station. They followed me down and a friend of mine, Stan Tenney, Steve Tenney, I went to school with me. I come in, they go, what you got? Like, I, I trying to lie he was like buck you know but it's like, <laughs> you know, like, they're like that they, they, they were laughing because i'd shot all these big deer and then all of a sudden i was at this thing and then uh, i called my friend steve chase to go with me and i said we've got to go get the other deer so he goes with me and it's just about dark and we walk down in there and we come out the guy that's writing in the main sportsman now is um uh, oh if you read if you read go in there the warden's telling the old stories what uh, tibbets <laughs> yeah, he's the he stepped out when we were up there I, I don't know if he remembers this. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It like we weren't caught then, but it's like my. It was only because my friend Steve, because they're standing there. He goes, "Nice one, boys." <laughs> you know about that. I just about pissed myself, and I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I was like this. I was like, "Oh no, oh no." Steve's like, "Yep, we got him." Like uh, down there, and so like Steve went with me down to the tagging station. This time with the warden fall on us. We go in, and I'm like, I'm standing there, and that it's coming in. They're like, you're back already, Garnet. I'm like, this my, I'm standing there, like, just like my stomach's just churning. Because I was like, he's going to see my name in that book, and somehow this is going to be bad. But it, it was all right. It was, it was a really big buck. Steve, and then Steve was like, yeah, and you tell stories later. He goes, how many shots did I get? It was like one shot. What do you think? It was running like 150 yards when I got that gun. I had to be like, yep. He goes, how long many did it take you to get that little dinky thing you got? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, he gave me all. He gave me all. I had to go along with it. I'm like, yeah, you're a, you're a terrible. <laughs> Biggest buck Steve ever shot, huh? <laughs> no, well, he, he got a, he's in the big bucks club, but it's like, yeah. Uh, I had a, he did all kinds. We did all kinds of crazy stuff. We had to, I don't know if you ever go over by Brownville at all. Nope, nope. Right back back when I was a kid, in the Brownville, if you go past there, like towards KI, there's an area where they had potato fields, and they call that the prairie. It's all wide open, you know, like in yeah. these big fields. Well, every fall, they would replant that with winter rye, and you go there before dark, you know, like we'd be going up. We had a camp at A-Ball, and we'd go up through that way, Route 11, you know, and go through there. We always see piles of deer out there, and I was like, "Wow, Steve, we got to go hunting there." Like up past, the, between that and Abimi, there's a stretch of roads that go in there, and I said, "There's tons of deer out in them, so we're gonna hunt there." We went up there and had, uh, well, I think we were 16, first year, and I think we could hunt alone. And uh, we went in there, and his his parents had gotten divorced, so I remember, you know, so it was just I went over and picked him up. And we had my father's truck, and we were driving in there, and we're getting ready to hunt, and. This is another thing you probably, like, I don't, like, my uncles showed me, like, I used to want to go in the woods when it's twilighty. If you can't see in the shadows, you can't see the deer, you know. So I we were waiting for the sun to get up enough so we could see, and I could hear something coming. So it was like, we got ready, and this big bull moose stepped out, and it was, like, right in front of the truck, probably, I don't know, 20 yards. I don't know what possessed me to call, but in the fall, you know, the past, they, they weren't really hunting moose but then. It just started, and this moose was stupid. I called, and they kept walking toward us, and I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And then my buddy Steve goes, one more, and I'm going to put one in your antler like this because it got to, like, 10 feet from the truck. And I was like, I was like Steve, you're just going to, why, why bother that? And he pulls up, shoots it in the antler, and it knocked it down. It went down on the ground. And I was sitting there looking at it, and I was like, what are you that's more than what I thought it'd do. Kept watching it, and it stopped breathing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like this. I said, "He's like, we got to get out." I'm like, "No, we got to. I guess we got to take care of it." I don't know how to. We didn't know how to really do that either. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I. This isn't me that did this, by the way. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like full disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were all right. Yeah, Note we had, to self: Don't break the law with Garnett. No, I'll never. I'll never. I I don't. I mean, now you look. I live a. I live a 
pleasant life where I don't have to worry about that. You know, like I go out and <laughs> if you're not breaking the law, you don't have to worry about anything. And That's right. If Warden caught me, I'd taken the ticket. So, but as but we were there, and it's like we didn't know what to do, and I was like, I'm. I was trained, you never waste nothing. So I was like, we're getting it. And whether we get caught or not, somebody will get it, you know, warden or us. So I got out my father's chainsaw and thought I'd stripped to my underwear. I cut the hind end off. <laughs> I was like, and, uh, that wasn't very good. So I, uh, <laughs> and then we came up with this idea that we would, uh, he, cut, he cut down a tree, so I guess we, he went into stealing trees after he did that. <laughs> we cut down a tree so we'd cover it up with uh, firewood. And I was over there with my knife. I knew how to take the shoulders off because I'd done that with, you know, just peel it back. And yeah. did that, and I was doing the bat straps. And he's like, he's freaking out trying to get wood. And finally I was there, and my underwear all bloody all over me. And I went to a, we went to a mud <laughs> puddle, and I washed up, and I put my clothes, my clothes back on. We'd thrown wood all over this moose. The horn, I think it must have did something to his skull or something because, you know, I don't know why it died, but he, I was like, <laughs> it was bad. Anyways, we drove off, and I thought it was all cool, and we're driving. I said, well, stop and get a coffee in there. If you go to Brownville Junction, it's now where they have a campground there, but it used to be a store next to Railroad Bed. I went in there, and I was getting a coffee, and I was going towards the door, and this old man goes, is that you guys use truck over there? I go, yeah. He goes, your tailgate's bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I almost, uh, almost, uh, almost uh, peed myself again. And uh, <laughs> we went by the forestry station, went and cleaned that up, and then we went to his mother's place. His mother Betty, uh, he always <laughs> wanted to. You know, they were divorced, so she was like struggling with kids and all that. And he went up, and I don't know, he, I don't know if his father or who showed him, but they covered up the. He went and got plastic bags put up on his door there, and he goes, "Well, you got to cut this up." I'm like, "I don't know. We'd never cut up a whole animal like that." So, we're, when his mother come home, she goes, "Oh my God!" She called my dad, and then my father come in. She goes, "Oh, Paul." And my father goes, "What the f you shitheads been doing?" <laughs> He's like that, and he goes, "You shitheads!" You like that? And they're standing there because the, they, they were over there, a blood all over us. So I, Steve, like, instead of just trying a piece in the fry pan, we're like, we'll cut half this way and half that other way. And then we'll grind it, whatever part, which is not good. <laughs> like, we're over there trying to cut up this big blue Jeez. moose. And I was like, my father wow. was so, my father was so, he was like, what the, yo. His mother was mad. I can tell the story now because he's gone and he's the one that shot it for real. So it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> for real. It wasn't, well, I don't want everybody to associate me with all of that because that's not something I would. I, I, no, I'm just, I'm, I've shot everything I need to shoot. And I, so. so, so did the, uh, did the rat come out with you? No. So that we were, we we're meat hunting. <laughs> <laughs> we loaded, we took every bit of meat. My father made me, no matter what, if I shot a, if I shot it, I remember I wanted to shoot a duck, and if you're going to shoot it, you're going to eat it. So it was like, that was my theory, so we did it. Yeah. We had, my father was just so, boy, I don't know if I was, you know, I thought I was never going to hunt for a while. <laughs> you guys are like losing your <laughs> hunting privileges. <laughs> your dad was a pretty good hunter, too? My father, no. He I mean, my father didn't care. He's like Pop, you know. Yeah. He just, my father had grown up with guides, you know, and all that, knew how, and he'd Back when he was young, there were so many deer that back then there was a lot of jacking, you know, things like that. And the guys, he, he hunted, Everett Bragdon used to be a big woodcutter and had a big apple orchard. My father used to hold light for him, and they'd shoot deer out of the orchards. <laughs> and he just didn't care. You know, my father shot deer. I watched him on a deer drive where uh, I was sitting there, and it's just my Uncle Ronnie hated deer driving. You know, like, and uh, he happened, to, that was one year, he must not have had sports that that day for Thanksgiving because he was there and uh, all of a sudden there's everybody shooting and all of a sudden this doe come up in front of him and my uncle Ron and I were sitting on a stump you know just watching and all of a sudden the deer come running up and I watched my father shoot it so and then everybody's arguing about who actually got it but he's my my father's laughing he goes I think Bobby got it because my cousin little cousin had <laughs> shot and he goes I'm pretty sure Bobby got it and he's like and Bob said yeah I'm thinking so he he that was he, he tagged it I think I can't remember, but it is like, uh, you know, like that's my father didn't, he always let me shoot. If we something in the road, I, 
I had a big buck over in, in the road up on, off the Golden Road and was on one of the side roads. But they, my father was up there working, and I had the 30-30, and I didn't pull the lever all the way up. And the moved deer standing like in front of me like 30 yards, and I kept going click. And I didn't realize I hadn't pulled the – Yeah. and then it ran off. And I was like – he just laughed, but uh, <laughs> I didn't find it as funny as he did. <laughs> that was before I was, got my other rifle. Yeah. That was one of my mistakes. Yeah. So, so back then, you were saying they were shooting them at night and stuff. It was more just for well, survival Well, I mean, they're then. just, well, was, yeah, I mean, people shot, the they, they shot meat, and they shot, and they didn't, like my father and them, there's just so many deer. You could go into Moxie, and they'd talk about at night. You could see 30 or 40 deer between driving from town out to the dam. If you think about in the 50s and 60s, there weren't coyotes. The bears had a, bears could, had a year-round season. Their bobcats had a bounty on them. They, so all the predators were pretty well thinned out, you know. So, I mean, like, versus now, you know, like, I mean, we got so many bears, people don't realize the bears in the spring, they're, they're one of the big predators on fawns. Yeah. You know, you got so many coyotes, they're hunted all the time. Back then, they weren't hunted all the time, and they had more deer, so it was, and they herd, had, herd they, men, herd men. There's way more deer. So like, well, they had the deer yards too. I they mean, had deer. So they had much. deer yards, and they're spread out. People don't realize when you cut off a deer yard, all you're doing is bunching more deer into smaller and smaller areas, and it's just like, and then yeah. that makes it easier for predators. Makes them <laughs> spotty, you know, like the deer. You know, people right now, you see deer every day. If you're out there, like when you're thinking, or most days, and you're like back then, you would have seen more, and you would got more. Like I can't imagine what it'd have been like to. Hunting, like I got the tail end of some of that. I saw people shoot a lot of deer, and I've shot a lot of deer. Like, but it was took a lot of, you know. I I joke, but I mean, when I had a ten gauge, you don't miss many. <laughs> you, know, you know, like <laughs> buck shot, to, buck shot, and ten gauge, and I had a single. You know, that first first buck I shot out of that tree, I, you know, I had nine pellets in it. They go, what'd you do, shoot it with a cannon? I mean, double up butts, like a 30, uh, 30, 30 pellet, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's really, and I had nine of them in it. I shot it behind the shoulders, and it didn't bleed, and it went, unless George McCourt was down there, and he's like, you know, when he found it, I guess I skipped off a story, didn't I? Because, like, uh, when he found that, uh, when he found the buck, I was there with Steve, my father, and uh, George McCourt and I, and when he found that first buck, it was, he goes, I found a buck, but it's not yours. It's only Neat Point. You know, <laughs> scored, <laughs> scored, scored 140. I mean, that's, that's the one that shows a picture of, like, I've, my buddy's standing behind me in the truck, and uh, it's a big deer, you know. So yeah. <laughs> that's my first deer. And the next year, I got a big one with Ronnie right after I I got all disappointed. And then I got one, and he's like, he goes, if you if you tag it, you're done. You know, we're done. You're done hunting. I'm not going to have anybody tag deer out hunting. He goes, he talked me into giving it to a sport. And he goes, you can go shoot another one. Well, I didn't get another one. <laughs> you know, Jeez. like, a, so I really, that was my first 10 point, you know, and I'd never got one like that. So anyways, I've, I'm now, I'm like, I'm, I would never have done, I love my rack. So, you know, I like, I like every year is so I just wonder which one I'm going to get. I don't. I don't care to, you know, like now for me is like I want, I know I'm going to see a, a big wrecked boy out there, and I just want to I want to see what he looks like when I get up there. Yeah. So. Well, you you touched on it earlier, and I think it's a it's a really good point is the confidence like your uncle Ronnie told you. you I know, know you, you I know, know every I, if you know, like I, mean, I see all kinds of people out there, and if you're if you don't if you don't have confidence, you'll stop hunting, you'll stop looking. If you stop looking, you're not going to get one. You know, like if you're out there and you're just walking, mm -hmm. you're not going to see it. You know, you know you're going to see it because it's going to be a tail. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting there focused, and it's hard to stay focused like that. But if you know that you're like, when you see a deer, is like you've hunted a lot. And you got that one chance. So that's why, you know, when I say I've missed, I have missed because I shoot. <laughs> you know, like, but yeah. I don't, I don't wait for the perfect shot. And I hear people like, <clears throat> if you say that on, you know, if you said that on a Facebook group. There's a whole bunch of people saying, you know, you're going to just wound a pile of deer. And it yeah. hasn't been my, that hasn't been my experience. My experience has been I've missed a fair amount of deer. You know, I missed them. And if I hit one, we usually get it. You know, yeah. I had to, and I've had a couple other times where, you know, I had one time where I nearly couldn't find it and nobody believed I hit it. I actually, I had, this was in Dexter, I think. I had uh, went up an old railroad bed, and then I was, I don't know where I came up with this theory, but I thought if I hunted from the lakeside, ice would 
got a couple inches of ice. I went down onto the lake, shimmied across the other side where I hunt, and I was going along. I've always jumped deer near the pond, and I was going along on the ice, and I was just about to go in where I was going to hunt in the woods. I was coming in from a different side. This huge buck jumped up in the, like, a swale grass and all the, and he started running. I was like, I ran just as hard as I could into the woods, and I looked. I could see his body between two cedars, maybe 30 yards. I shot, his tail went down, he hunkered, took off, and I was like, oh, he's dead. I'm going to get somebody to get him, to tag him back then. <laughs> 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 I didn't want to be done. But I went, I went across the pond, and I got my, I don't remember, I had my father-in-law, ex-father-in-law, my wife, I don't, I was bringing, had those two, I had one of them to tag or whatever, and had my dad and I had another guy, so four of us, five of us. And we went, and my father's like, what the hell are you doing? Because like, you could look through the ice, see the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we we're going across like two inches of ice, 50, like 30 yards apart going across there. And got over there, and I, I said, I shot him between, I went up in the woods, and I said, I shot him down between these trees. There's no snow. There's just a tiny tuft of hair. There's no blood. And everybody's like, well, you didn't hit it. I said, oh, I hit it. It was that close. So we spread out, went up through. We looked for over an hour. Everybody's like, no, you missed it. And they laughed. I was like, I wouldn't leave because I said, I know I hit it. Right. And they all left me thinking I was a dud. Took off. And I kept looking. And then finally, there's an area where they'd been cut and there's all these furs. He was laying in the pile in there. And I'd shot him up higher up in here. So when he laid there, there's blood like you can't even believe where he'd laid down, but there's no blood yeah. till he laid, you know, when he fell yeah. over, his whole body cavity must have drained out. Yeah. There's you... a big one, and I was like, and I was over 200 pounds. I dragged, I was like so ugly. I dragged, <laughs> I dragged that fast. I dragged across the lake as fast as I could. I was like, oh, I'm going to show you guys. And got over there, and I, I went down and tagged it. I said, see? They could have, you know, like, I told you I hit it, you know, but it yeah. it took me like another hour because I wouldn't, I just knew that I'd hit it, but I'd hit it up. You know, if you hit a deer up high in the, underneath, probably just underneath yeah, the, you know. The just, high, high in the lungs, they, the lungs have to fill up before it yeah, comes out. Yeah, he maybe went 75 yards from where we were, but it was all them furs, and you just didn't see him laying Right in a bunch of them, you know. So he's laying there, kind of tipped in there. When I, when I, I don't know what made me look into those furs, but I pulled back and there, there's I could see hide, and I was like, oop. I yeah. dra- I gutted him in like record time and dragged him in record time because I wanted to be, <laughs> then see, you know, I, I got it, you know. But I, was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was getting back. You was talking about uh, always expecting to see something, you yeah. know, and. uh it was back when me and Chris first started um, filming, when he started filming me with my sports, oh, you know. Yeah. And uh, I remember one time, it was one of them rough weeks, the weather was bare ground and crunchy leaves. and hard to get on to. Yeah, you know, it's hard to guide people like that because you're, you're, you're just trying to, my theory was if I put on enough miles, I'd find one, you know. And I remember one day we was going along, probably been a few days, hadn't seen nothing, you know, hadn't seen a buck anyway, and... And and Chris usually would always be the one trying to encourage the hunter because sometimes they'd be tired or struggling to get up the hills and stuff. And and uh, so, anyways, I heard I heard the hunter whisper to Chris uh, something like, um, "I don't think we're gonna see one" or something like that. And Chris like confirmed it with him he go something they whatever they were saying they was conferring that we weren't going to see nothing i turned around and i give both of them the stare and i go i always expect to see something yeah and they just went like dead silent you know because you have to be like that well you're you, you're a positive guy anyways no matter what you're doing right? but I, I i can be negative in a lot of things you know I, like i said you be negative like we're all you know our country's going to pieces or whatever but if it's deer hunting i don't know what it is but it, yeah if you if you expect to see something then you're you make it happen because like if if you go out there and you're just you don't expect to see something what are you doing there you know well you if you don't i think <laughs> it's like psychology if you don't expect to see nothing then all of a sudden you're not looking anyway. You're That's not what I'm looking saying. Around. Right. You're just I've, you're, you're walking. just taking a stroll you're in the walking. woods. Yeah, and if you're not if you're not hunting, you're not going to get anything. I don't. When these people say they had their head down, or whatever. I mean, 
that's just the, the way to do it. I mean, like for me, you know, I have, I know every day that I'm in the woods. Yeah. I know if I go hunting with your daughter, she and I are going to see something. I know we will. I yeah, just know I, that I know when we go in the woods, we're going to see something. Doesn't mean we're going to get it. You yeah. know, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. I can be just scouting along or going along on the ground know. or whatever. And I actually, as I'm going along, I get in these, you know, you get in them places you like. I expect to see Feels like a deer. And I visualize, I actually, in my mind, I'm visualizing one coming along in this spot. That's an important part. I do the same thing. I think a lot of guys do. You'll see a, you'll see something and you'll say, I mean, you can just picture that buck or deer coming through. I visualize it all the time. One coming along here or there. And it happens. Sometimes it happens just the way you visualize it too. You'll. I've had, I've had, like, the thing that taught me how is, like, deer, if you're not ready or whatever, I had, one time I was tipping, and I was getting branches, I was selling them, I needed money when I, uh, I don't know if I was a forest stranger then, it might have been. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I used to tip and get, and sort and sell them for reeves, you know, and I'd sell the tips, but I, explain, I remember explain I, Explain what I that is for anyone that. Tips, well, I mean, you're just breaking the ends off fir branches, and you're. They use them to make the reeds, right? And they pay by the pound back then. I don't know if it's twenty five cents or whatever it was, but I had to work pretty hard to do it. And I remember I was on the Twitch Trail and I see three deer go across in front of me. And instead of like, I I don't remember if I had a shotgun or what I had with me. I didn't. I, I wasn't hunting. I was, but I had a gun. I always had a gun. I don't yeah. know why. I just <clears throat> for dark or something. I'd sit and you know, but I. I remember I didn't grab my gun. I walked like 50 yards down, and like instead of doing something super stupid, because like I had my hand full of tips, I said, hell with that. I mean, what am I going to do if I see something now? I turned around. I did, My gun's 50 yards behind me. I turned around and walked back. You know, I was walking back, and a buck jumped up five feet from me and dropped, stayed like here to your door, maybe 10 yards away. And stood there looking at me, and I'm like, rotten mother. <laughs> and, uh, I'm standing there with two hands full of tips and no gun. And he got a, he got away. I was like, good for you, buddy. You know, I was like, but I that was teaching. I don't I don't care what you who you are. There's deer there, and like you you walk by way more. You know, oh, yeah. how many times you walk in there and you see you guys with iron orange and I go right by you. And you're like you stand there. You know, like. They bucks do that all the time to you. So you can think whatever you want. If you're not, if you're not working at it, you're going to miss them. And like that's why for me, like I don't hunt quite the same as some of these other guys. Because like when I talked about going slow, I probably track way slower than what it should be. You know, because like I've shot three in their bed though. You know, that didn't know I was there. So I mean, I've had luck doing way my. Yeah. For me, if I I know for me if I'm going too fast. I'm just going to be jumping the first time. And I was like, so I hunt slow. And like, and a lot of times I get up in the hardwood. Like I, I remember back to that deer I was talking about. I've had a couple of times I've had deer that stop and you can't see them. I don't know how many times you've seen, oh, like, yeah. you know, when they stop. And I, so I stand there and you, you can have a buck stay there 20 minutes, watch him where he, before he decides to go. Yeah. And he'll sit there and look where he's going. So I get up into hardwood where I can look like that, and a lot of times I'll just stop. And that's kind of like when I had my son-in-law. I stop, and I'll do whatever, and I'm looking, waiting to see if I can see anything out there. And when that, if you're there when that deer starts to start walking again, you know, you'll see it. You know, if you started across there, you'd never, you know, you're going to see it, but you're going to see a flash of them. You know, and that's where the harder shots are, you know. But yeah. for me, when I see a flash of them, if I see antlers outside, and everybody's like, well, I saw an eight-pointer. I saw a 10. I'm like, I've never counted a single point ever until it's dead. <laughs> yeah. Ever, ever. I don't. I mean, I've never sat there and said I counted points. If, if it's out past its ears and looks like a, you know, a, a nice buck, I'm lead flying, and then I go up and start counting wins there on the yeah. ground. You know, I didn't know that one was 16 points. I did it. All I knew was he had, last year, he had horns above his head, you know, yeah. like in way up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, that's a big one, you know. So That yeah, was a beauty. That biggest one I shot in Ontario there. Yep. I didn't. I didn't know what that. I knew it had a big rack because I. Uh, I could. Yeah. I could see a big rack coming through the firs. Yep. But I didn't know if it had. Two How points. many points? Yeah. I didn't know what it had, and I didn't know if it. It. It appeared to be like a good beam. That's all I could see. Like yep. I it got a flash of a beam sticking out there, and 
It ended up being a 10-pointer. But even when it st- stopped, I bladded and it stopped, and it was like 19 paces. Yep. I never look because you can't – you don't look at the horns. That's how people miss. You you start looking at the horns instead of shooting. I don't waste, I just, yeah, I'm I always, just shot. He took off and tumbled down, and when I walked – when I walked over there, I was like, holy shit. I, I couldn't believe how big the rack was because he's so wide that his his head wasn't really hitting the ground. His horns was holding his head up from being on the ground, you know. Yep. And uh, But I didn't know. I knew it was a good enough rack, and I was shooting, and that's it. There's that- more time to... There's more time to count points afterwards I do. than Ab- before. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. Didn't, like For me, I've shot deer like way back when I didn't care about how big or whatever the rack I was shooting on just any buck. I remember yeah. I had one I had one that I got just took off, and I, I could hear his horns going through the, you know, I don't if you've heard it, but if you're in alders, you can hear their horns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making this weird, you know, I mean, it just and I knew it was a buck, and I just shot. I didn't know what it, you know, like I never saw a rack or anything. I just knew it was a buck, and big body and went over, and it turned out to be one of my better racks up to that point. You know, like I, and I like I knew it was a buck, so don't you know like uh, well yeah when you hear I knew I mean I could hear his when you hear horns going, rattling, rattling through the, the bushes I knew yeah. I know the difference I've I've yeah. jumped them and done that but this one I could see the deer going and I couldn't see I wasn't like well I guess it was like what you're saying I'm aiming I'm not I'm trying to aim before, more than look at the yeah I, I gauge my deer and that's why I've made some boo boos <laughs> I'm like got smaller deer and I tag them. You know, yep. like I, that one night I tagged that crotch horn. And I remember Glenn Feeney actually helped me. Uh, I brought it down. My mom loved deer meat, and I had to deliver in her because I figured a young one be, could eat the liver. But uh, it was all frozen. And back then, I don't remember I had that geo tracker. <laughs> I remember. I had that. these. I went and I, I, I had to raise. We get from retroactive raise when I was a forest stranger, and I got like 10,000. And I went with a bunch of unicorn <laughs> girls that worked here. So, <laughs> and they all rode down with me, and like I was going to get a jeep. I was like, "Oh, I'll be cool in this jeep." And I got down there, and ten thousand dollars wasn't enough for the, <laughs> any any good jeep. So at the time, and the, so they had this fairly new geo tracker, and these girls were, "Oh, that's great!" Well, these girls were. You know, talked me into it. <laughs> so I had that. And then, <laughs> These girls you just met talked you into it. Uh, I didn't just meet them. I was like, I don't know. I had all kinds of crazy stuff I did around here. <laughs> they had, I had one time across the street, There's, they used to have a, a hot tub up across the street from oh, there. Oh, yeah. I went over, and I was like, this and that. I was like, my girlfriend was bartending in your bar, and I was like, uh, she goes, why don't you go over there all up there? And I, I go out there all skinny dipping, you know, and the, I was like, ooh, this is fun. It looks fun. <laughs> I go up there, and, the, and they're all, uh, they put blue dye in the in the hot tub. And the, the friend of mine, is, they called him Traveler. I don't know. He's one of the guys. Stands up, and he's blue from there down. <laughs> I, I was like this, and I was like, some of the guys, they got blue on their head. You know, they look like Smurfs. I, I was sitting there, and I was like, stand there, Buckety by her butt on the deck, and I go, whoa! I just came that close to getting. I was a four stranger. I was like, I look like the tight. I'd have to wear like a, you know, probably I would have had to wear turtlenecks or something and gloves. <laughs> I was like, I didn't have blue. I was like, holy cow! But they were a wild bunch. Yeah, I heard a lot of stories about those days. Oh my god, they're pretty. Yeah, yep. But we'll save that for another episode. Yeah, yeah we'll save <laughs> the that old for unicorn different. days. Oh yeah. yeah. I was so, going to ask you. Get, well, do you go ahead. Some, I was going to ask you, you mentioned the guys from New Jersey coming down to the Forks that oh, yeah. Ronnie used to guide and oh, stuff. Yeah. Do you remember any of the names? I don't, but Gordon would. I, I, there was two that I, that we knew forever, and they called them Shachi and Gertrude. Those guys had both fought in Korea. These guys were. Yeah. Well, did did uh, you do remember these guys? Because I had some guys at Cedar Ridge that started oh. hunting with me, and is yeah. that the guys that are cops? Oh my no, God. Oh, okay. no. They had uh, <laughs> one of them was a was a well driller, and one of them was oh, a, I had a farm. And I one of them's remember. name was uh, well, you guided one of them uh, uh, for Moose a couple of years ago. That uh, oh, Van Matter, Dennis. Oh yeah, 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 Dennis Van Meter, yeah, Dennis. And then the other one was Don Shin, real Shin. big, yeah, real one. big guy, real big. Yeah, heavy guy. I mean, he might not have been back then, but when he started coming with me, he was a big heavy guy. And all, they talked about that. Ronnie used to guide him. He shot a quite a few deer for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
They always talked about they'd be sitting up there on the side of Johnson Mountain, and they'd see in the day they'd see Ronnie go around like Two or four times, times around the mountain in the day. <laughs> he, he would, he would, yeah, he's always going. It's like he's always have a twelve gauge semi auto, and you know when Ronnie is shooting because he'd be like bang, 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 just like his, <laughs> he, he put out lead, you know, like and he shot a lot, and that's how the guy that taught him and uh, my grandfather taught them. But I mean, more and Ricker. If you ever see as you're coming into the forks, you know, before great, uh, Northern Outdoors where Moxie has their stuff now. Yeah, yeah. That used to be Ricker's cabins, and this guy shot deer. He was infamous for the, you know, he didn't, everybody that's from the forks knew him as, I mean, these guys were all dealer killers. He's known as the, you know, by the wardens, everybody, Lloyd Trafton, everybody knew because he'd shoot deer every single day. And my uncles would go with him. And they shoot deer and for his sport, you know. They let he, they made back then. They used to make sure the sports go home with their deer, so they they all go with them. And he was the tight. He had a three hundred Savage open tight. That's the same thing my grandfather hunted with semi auto. And they just they lead was flying when there's deer. Even like in if there's deer, like he just shot every day. They kill deer. He you killed, could kill either sex then. You could yeah. kill either sex. He killed. He had a story. I remember him telling my grandfather talking about. He had one time he wounded a buck. It's kind of gruesome. So I probably, shouldn't, I don't know. He grabbed onto its horns, walked it out. Rather because back then there's no roads. Walked it all the way out the road before he killed it. And, oh, you know that's how rough these guys were. But I mean he was a, he's an unbelievable hunter. You know just like that's where Ronnie learned. You know they 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 learned from him and my grandfather and it's way different than than it is now you know because there's like no roads they used to have trails going to these ponds you know and they most of the you know they you know that's like when you guys are you're going to do your onyx hunt thing i'm going to tell you how bad i hate onyx hunting <laughs> and, and how bad i don't like uh, gps's because like when i was a kid nobody would go in the woods all i'd go in with is a bubble compass because i don't care if i stay there i'm not scared you know yeah. but i so many people would never leave the road, and now with your onyx hunt and with your, with your, you know, GPSs, the, you know. Well, I always, people people are showing up places. I've been I've been in the woods now, and all of a sudden somebody stop and say something to me. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? You know, because I'd be a mile off the road or something. Yeah, because that's where I started hunt. Everybody likes to hunt out. You know, I've like I said, I've shot something, saw them from the vehicle for seen. You know, you see him and you see him wherever you're going to see him, but. I always figured for me, like those big bucks that don't like to be around people, the ones that got some age, they're back, they're, not, they're, they're back in there. You go up there, some of them bucks don't even come out around. They're like, you go by these roads and everybody's like, oh, looking for a track. I'm like, you can walk 100 yards off the road and find tracks. I got a spot and I went with Gordon. I was like, why ain't he bringing me here? Because like I was there with my cousin Brian walking up this road and I was like, there's nothing here. No tracks, no nothing. I get up there and I'm watching a big bull moose out in a cut. I hadn't gone... 20 yards into the into the woods there's on snow there's tracks and all of a sudden i jumped a buck and i was like i see it go and i ran he went out in that cut this is where i say i blatantly missed this is where blatantly because <laughs> <laughs> it was running ran down a hill all the way up to maybe 150 200 yards out and it stopped and i'd shot all the way as he's running Never touched him. He just go through whips, you know. Yeah. He got up there and he stopped, and then I had one good shot, and I'm out of breath. Grabbed onto a little twig, you know, like trying to rest my gun, and I I missed him again. But he was a whomper. He was a good one. My cousin come along, and it's just we didn't get any deer there. But I mean, there's you would never have thought to think there's a deer there because there's no yeah. tracks in the road, you know. And there's big, you know, I've seen places where these big bucks just don't want to come out. You no. like everybody thinks they're going to go wherever, and they a big buck will stay away from. Them. He might not be chase every single doe like some of them other ones. I don't know why they don't. But well, I think they know how to find the does. They know without they can, having they without they going across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you watch. There's there's bucks. I mean, like most bucks you see that are, you know, they can't help themselves. They just start traveling. Yeah. Once they start traveling, but some of them big mumpers, they they didn't get that way by not by falling for it. So. Yeah, well, I uh, I still don't think, even though, even I noticed that even when the GPS come out, you know, I mean, that it still didn't get people back in, you know what I mean? The people still, because they was 
scared of the woods anyways. Mm-hmm. So they, even though they knew they could probably get out, they were still, for some reason, scared to get in. And it's, I think it's still that way. And, and uh, the Onyx is a handy tool. And it's really just a GPS, but it's just got more features that you can see the maps and stuff. But I haven't noticed any more people in the woods. Well, I, I, I've, I actually had somebody show me their Onyx. That's why I just oh, said yeah. that is a funny. My cousin has it, too. He's like... Yeah, uh, my cousin's uh, husband actually, Brian Thayer. He's like, a, "Hey, Brian." <laughs> <laughs> he he, he listens. He listens. He, he listens to you guys a lot, you know. Yeah. So I was like, uh, "But he uh, he has that, you know." He showed me, and I was like, "I don't know. I'm I'm from old school. I should break down because like it saved me on my dragon." Well, so it I, is. That's, you know, I, like for me, like I mean, you you guys can be looking at that Onyx hunt. I watched the this guy showed me it where he, cause he goes. I got friends over here. You know, like he's, yeah. he's standing there showing me on the screen, and I'm like, "Well, get the hell out of here!" You know, yeah. Cause yeah. I, you know this was I, not far from here, really. I'm yeah. Here I'm going back to yeah. the not far from here. I was probably ten or fifteen miles from here, but I was in the woods yeah. where I never. Why would you ever in the world? see somebody in the big right. giant piece of woods and all of a sudden see somebody like I see orange and I'm like going, what the hell is he doing here? Yeah. And he's the one that showed me, he was like, I got a friend over this way. And I'm like, yeah, I turned around and walked out, but I was like, and that was on X hunt. <clears throat> so there you guys go. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, you know, it is super handy because like for me, well, I've dragged a mile further than I've had to before yeah. by not having something well, like that. I just, to me, it's just like a, it's a nice tool, you yeah. know. But I tell people, don't. A lot of people try to use. Even they used to try to use a GPS, and and they try to use it as more of a crutch. In other words, they they think that's the answer for a lot of things, and they try to use it and figure things out with it. You know, uh, maybe there'll be a deer here or there, and and that ain't really how to use it. You know what I mean? And and like when I first started, I told this before, but. If you keep pulling that out and looking at it all day long, especially tracking, you don't you're not paying attention to what the woods looks like, especially in an unfamiliar place. And the next thing you know, you don't really know where you are because you didn't pay attention to the woods. So I tell people use it for the tool that it is if you want to mark things and mark your truck or if you find some sign or whatever, but you don't need to have it out constantly looking at it. And that's for for deer hunting. I mean, it's handy. It is handy for turkey hunting, moose hunting. You can yeah, see find the, the hidden fields, yeah. hidden cuts. Yeah. It's handy for that. But the one thing I know, every day, I mean, I'm not techie, so I don't, I don't know all the features of stuff. I try to learn a little bit all the time. As I, if I play with it myself and push the buttons, I can. I say, oh, I didn't know that. You know, I can figure it out better than trying to read the manual. But the other day, I, I went to put in. Uh, um, I got one of the state bear baits in hold of it oh, for, yeah, yeah. for my grandson. Yeah. And uh, they sent me the thing with the coordinates on it. You know, they send you the tag to put on it. And uh, so I, we get a barrel and we got our bait and we're going to go in there. So I had put it, the coordinates, when I went to put it in my Onyx to make a pin for it, the latitude and longitude they give you was in decimal points. Oh. So it's so many degrees point Mm -hmm. blah 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 well i always so this is my tip to people out there when you're listening because i've always told people when you have a gps or your onyx or everything go in your settings and put it if and put put it on minutes degrees minutes and seconds because that's how a map is you read a map in uh topo map in minutes and seconds so i had to it wasn't when I put it in there, I couldn't figure it out at first. So I had to go in my settings and put it back to decimal points. Right. Yeah. There's a setting, right? You yeah. So I it. went back in the settings and I changed it and I oh, went that. in there and the bear bait wasn't there anyway. I'm like, and now this is one of them ones that supposedly been years and years. You know, now they, the way they got it now, you can, it's a lottery system. If you draw one, you get it for three years yep. and then it goes back in again. There ain't never been a bear bait there, and I'm like, well, they must have somebody must not have had it in the right place. So I started making circles, and you can always see if there's been a bear bait over the years, you know. And there was nothing, but it was a good spot. I'm like, it was nice dark woods, you know. And I'm like, huh. So I made a few circles in there, and I'm like, I'm thinking, well, do I have to put it here? I mean, so, and it says you're supposed to, you know, in the contract. 
So I went out to the road, and I, I said, let's walk down the road, Rylan. I said, it's probably a bait trail here somewhere close. Yeah. Oh, he walked up and down the road a couple hundred yards, no bait trails. And I'm like, well. Good, new we're, spot. <laughs> we're going to put it here. So we went in and put it there. And within a, they didn't find it immediately like they do established ones. But within a week and a half or so there, we had a bear coming and then another one. And we actually sat there the, the youth night. Uh, yeah. I put a double buddy stand in there. And we sat there and we see a yearling. And he came right in. I think he came in from the road because... The mosquitoes, there hasn't been hardly any bugs all mm. summer. We got down there and got out of Man, the truck, yeah. and it was like being in Africa. Oh, there was hordes of mosquitoes. Uh, I never, ever seen the mosquitoes yeah. that thick. We get up in the stand, and I'm like, I mean, and I'm not, I like to sit still and stuff, and I can take bugs, really, and I couldn't, they were driving me crazy. Insane, yeah. I had brought a, I'd brought a jacket because it gets cool at night, and you're just sitting there. I had to put my jacket, I pulled it up over my head and put my hands inside of it and curled it around so I could just look out like the neck of the jacket. And I was going, (laughs) blowing the mosquitoes from coming out. That's how thick they were. I never seen nothing. And Rylan was the same way. And he's, you know, you got to. That's funny. That last Saturday night, it was. Like I, don't, I haven't seen bugs at all yet. No, this year. it's the only yeah. place because it's yeah. down at like it's wet hole it, it's, or something. Yeah. Well, it's all it's going in. It's on the uh, must be boggy or something in behind. Yeah. There. Well, you know, it's on the beach road. Yep. So you know, you get in there and it's all black growth down below, all the way down to the pond, and it's probably the same level as the lake. And I'm like, got oh, enough wet wet in there to keep. My them, God, I never. Mosquitoes. And then we went to bait it the last time the other day when we went in to bait it. Was saying, we got out of the truck and it was like. Pfft, Hordes of them. We had to actually get the bait in the buckets and run up through the woods and dump it in there and run out to get away from them mosquitoes. Nice. So I don't know if he's going to be able to sit there this Saturday or tomorrow night because... Look for a sponsor that does mosquitoes for you. Yeah. Thermosel would probably <laughs> Thermosel. work or something, but I said, if you sit here again, honey, you're going to have to bring a be mosquito tough, yeah. net or something. You'll, you'll, you'll earn it, I guess. Yeah. But anyways, that the whole thing yeah. was the point was... was I had to change the setting, so if, but I, I recommend that you put your settings on anything, your GPS, if you use topo maps, because it won't correspond. You can't do the math to try to figure it close enough, you know? So, so um, I guess the next one's going to be just before moose season, so we're probably going to cover a little yeah, more. Yeah, I've on had moose. a couple people. You want a moose story? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got time for one, but. Yeah. Yeah, next time we'll talk a little bit about scouting moose and getting ready because I've had a couple people ask about yeah. that if yeah, we talk a little news. bit about uh, scouting for moose and all that because getting harder and harder. Just, we I already did. we already got one good moose story, so I'm ready for yeah. this one too. <laughs> I had the one with the. I, I was hoping Mike would be here because yeah. uh, he was. He was oh, a, I know. What I you put mean. that. I put that picture up, but I didn't. You just said you don't remember it, so because oh. we went in, you had a you had a sport that told everybody you could shoot a. He shoot his bow forty yards, fifty yards, and no yeah, problem. He, and he he, he said, shot one in the rear end when you uh, yeah. early in the week because I remember Steve Coleman had tracked it later. But uh, yeah, no, Mikey came over and tracked with me. Was that my, yep. Yeah. So that's that's back when we that's back in the day that that uh, there was a lot more moose. You know, oh yeah, I mean? it's tons, of, way more moose. But back then we hardly ever got out of the cuts. We just got in them hidden clear cuts and hunted in the cuts and got them out with a ram charger and stuff. Well, you'd he'd wounded that one and got a shot it in the rear end or whatever, stumbled yeah. or something. Big one too. It was about he a said, sixty inch. He said so later in the the week is like the last day. He said you guys you're gonna call and he had Mike is gonna gonna uh, run the camera and. Uh, he and I'd been out all night the night before because we'd already uh, <laughs> doing a little celebrate. We'd already celebrated because we'd already guided all our, all the moose we needed, and he's like, "You're gonna, he's gonna film, and you're gonna call." So I, we drove into Appleton, and I just remember uh, you worked your way up, and we see one out in the cut. So you from the road, we were on the way in. There yeah. was that bull standing so he, out in the cut. So you went up on one side of it, and I got down by the road, and I was gonna call it towards the road, and we. We thought you had a bow up there, and so Mike's videoing it, and I started calling, and this cow come out next to us, maybe 30 yards, and Mike farted, you know, like that. <laughs> and she answered. He goes, I'm going to give her another one. And I said, you better. I forgot we were, like, filming, you know, like that. And I said, better not. You're going to shit your pants, you know, like that. <laughs> and and uh, we, can, we were sitting there videoing, 
and I'm calling, and all of a sudden you hear kerpow, and we see like a bunch of mist come off the side of the moose. And I was like, this isn't the... Mike goes, what happened? I go, somebody shot our effing moose. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's really, really, you know, like he's videoing. And we're like that. And then all of a sudden he shot again. So you, he'd taken your rifle, I, I think. No, he I, brought his own. He had his own. What he had, You made him shoot it with the rifle anyways. And I that, told him, I said, we're not going to get We're not going to get this bull. He's not bull. going to come. He wasn't coming down even with a cow there. But uh, yeah. he shot it. And I looked at Mike. I go, somebody just shot our moose. Because we <laughs> you know, like that. We're standing there. And then. All of a sudden, we realized that uh, Hal Sport had shot the shot. And so yep. Mike's jumping up and down, had the camera. Well, Mike goes, I'm going to go get the truck, and we'll uh, go. And then I come, Hal come down, and he goes, what the hell are you doing, Garnet? Because I was just sitting there videoing, and I was watching Mike's hat go back and forth, going up over the horizon. I go, he just went up the wrong road. <laughs> like because he, he went the wrong road and i didn't tell him i was just videoing him walking over like i I probably still half smashed i don't know i think <laughs> I, probably I, mike was too uh, oh yeah he, I'm, I'm sure he was he went up the wrong road i hal goes what do you video <laughs> like that i said mike went up the wrong road <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah so we're getting ready to wrap up here i think gonna and uh yeah. next time i got a debbie one for you too so Next time? All right, well, I, I, well oh, yeah. I, you asked last time whether she was hired on me or not. And I you got to hear this one. We got time. Probably All right. people don't. People would listen to this if it was four hours long. Well, I don't want to. Well, if it's too long. No, no, no. no. Huh? I'm not going to stop you. Well, he's asking, like, uh, the most, un, right. most unprofessional I've ever been as a guide was this. I've been, I know the reason I'm saying it is hoping Mike could be here because he had a girl working at the truck stop named Mo Bonita. <laughs> you know, and, and I went up Bonita, and I was I up there. And were, like the yeah. fish? Yeah, well, she's from Missouri, and she ended up in Jatman somehow. She's kind of a rougher type girl, I guess. But she's up there putting her foot behind her head like that, and I'm pretty limber back then. So I put my foot behind my head. I just got divorced, like I was saying. And I said, imagine what would happen if we locked horns like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so this is where she worked for Mike, and I had... Uh, so we, we were out, and she was teaching me to two-step that night. We were out, and she was wearing coveralls and a T-shirt and nothing else, I, from what I remember. And we two-stepped, <laughs> and then the next morning, I was supposed to go guide. They, they had a crew from Massachusetts that paid for this one guy that had never hunted before. So I was like, and I was like, supposed to be there, you know. What I, was we hunting I, for, moose or deer? Deer. And I was like, this is like... All of a sudden, I look, and when I was waking up, the lights, uh, I go, it's light out. I go, oh, no. So I, I got there, and I got to the door, and that's the first the first time I've ever seen Debbie uh, mad at me. You know, and she's standing there, she's, darn it. And like, and just like under her breath, because that guy's going, she's like, it's, you know, breakfast. And I was like, I didn't realize I wasn't getting breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if I was going to get lunch. And uh, <laughs> I said this guy, and the place I'd scouted for deer was up by Kelly Dam Road. Uh, I, I, I'd, uh, I was going to hunt on Indian. Hey, wait a minute now. You keep talking about everybody else giving up your spots. Well, this is this is well, I, I, this yeah, this isn't far from your Penobscot Lake. Actually, I shot a big deer in there, but uh, I had. Uh, it's not mine. Well, I mean, I, your <laughs> friends, you know. But I this was the backside of Cheney Pond. Back then, it was gated, and I had it still key. is. I had a key, you know what I mean, and I had a key, and now oh, yeah. they now they have a gate come from the other way. But back then, you could only come from through the Indian ground and then into there. And Gary Hall had cut it. Well, I was in there, and I was gonna take him hunting there. Like I said, I shot a deer in there, but <laughs> anyways, I was gonna take him hunting there, and I realized, oh my God, that's an hour to get in there. It's already lights up. I was like driving along. I I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was like, oh my God, I was like places I wanted to take him are so far away now, and I just, I was going up by the Dumas Road, and I said, heck with that, turned in, and turned in on that road, never hunted there in my life, you know, is that Sandy Bay Mountain, it's off there, yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'm uh, driving by Sandy Bay, looking out there, and I'm, that burp coming down, I don't know if that's part of, it must be one of, uh, must be in a branch of Sandy Stream or something, but there's, Probably it's, a, it's a little brook down along the, the edge of that. On the know. north side? It's on the north side. Yeah, that going, runs into the south branch. So I, I knew it was, you know, I was like, I, I, I'm driving along, and I said, I just come up with a, this in my head. I said, you just uh, go down, cross that brook, go up on that ridge, and wait for me. Deer will come down through. I just, like, I'd, no, I'd never hunted deer in my life. <laughs> I was like this, and I was like this, and I, so I drove up maybe a mile, 
and I took a nap, <laughs> you know, because I'd been there and I said, I'll hunt my way. Lo and behold, this guy had never hunted in his life before, shot a deer walking up there. So when I come down, he's like sitting on his deer. <laughs> I was like, I hadn't heard any shooting. I'm like going, you know, what it's like. So I was like a couple hours later and he's like, I got one. I'm like that. And I was like, oh, you got a smasher. So we were gutting it and I was like, boy, that's a long drag. I go get your, and like I was hung over. <laughs> so I was, like, I was like, I'm going to go get one of your friends because like they weren't super serious hunters. So I, I drove back to the lodge and there's one guy at the camp. And I said, come on, your buddy's got one. We need help get it out. He got in the truck. I drove back and turned on the Dumas Road and we're driving in. A buck come out in the road. I go, oh my God. He's like, this, this guy opens his door and shoots between, you know, down, down the front. Got that deer. So I was like, jeez. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I had both those bucks that night. So, like, Dave and I probably got back into Debbie's good graces. <laughs> but it's like I, that night I was at the bar with Mike, and I was sitting next to this guy. He had big, frizzy hair. And I was like, and he started, we were talking about ex-wives. I was like, my ex-wife calls me, blah, blah, blah. He's like, my, I, I came home from one season, and she built a house. I'm like, built a house? What, what do you do? And they go, this is wild thing. I go, wow, What? And like I don't watch baseball. This is Mitch Williams, a baseball player. <laughs> so he's like, I'm sitting there, and I was like, "Wow, who?" Like that. And he loved that I didn't know. And he goes, "How much do you charge?" And I was like, "Well, Hal back then paid a lot. He paid more for me than I think Mike." <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I was like, "For the, I'm pretty sure I made a lot more than Mike did." But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, uh, he's like, so he's like, uh, we had that that uh, he's like, uh, so how much you charge? And I was like, oh, figuring out what I was getting paid. Said like double what Hal was paying me. I said that's how much I get a day. And he's like, any guarantee if we get it one? The, I was like, if you don't get one, you can kick my ass. And he goes, good deal. He stands up. He's six seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that, and Mike goes, good luck, isn't it? <laughs> I go walking out, and these guys are all like Bonanno. They're all like mafia guys that he's in his in laws from Philadelphia. So I was like, I had him all week. He was like the, he had the worst luck of any person in the world because we were in the woods. He had a nine power scope. And we had a big buck stand up in front of me. I was like, oh, my. I'm looking at him. He'd see the deer, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going, trying to, like, shoot. Well, he turned his scope on to nine power, oh. and this deer is only, like, 30 yards, and then he run off. He goes, that's a big one. I'm like, yeah, that's a big one. We went all week like that, and he was like, he, he had a Bronco, uh, I can't remember what he had, but I had that junky old truck. And he had, a, oh, Eddie Bauer edition Bronco. It was, like, this really nice his four-wheel drive wasn't working, and it stuck, and I was barely pulling with my truck. He goes, yank on it. I'm like, I'm not going to destroy your truck. He goes, let me in yours then. He had the other guys, and he's banging. I was like, don't break my truck. He goes, if I break your truck, I'll buy you a new one. I'm like, go! <laughs> go! <laughs> but he, and then the last day, we saw, and then he saw the, we saw a deer out in a cut. This is up on Forsyth. They just cut in there, and I see these deer. He's out there, and he's left-handed, and he's shooting, missing. He hands me the rifle and said, get me, shoot it, <laughs> like that. And I handed it back, and I said, you shoot it. He shot and missed all those deer running across, and big buck <laughs> went right, big buck right with him. Never got it. And then the last day, I'm with his brother-in-law, and we're coming down, and he's walking in the road in front of us, and it's just about dark. I was like, Ace, I tried my best. You know, it's, you're probably and all, thinking, but you're going to get your ass kicked. Uh, that's what I was thinking. But it's like <laughs> all of a sudden, a deer goes right behind him, a buck crossed the road, probably 50 yards behind where he just walked through. If he'd been looking, he would have seen it. You know, like I was sitting there, I go, are you shitting me? A deer crossed the road, and it's like, but they were, wow. they were, they were having them. They, these guys were so Italian, like that first night. Debbie would have known the difference. She, they were like, we need spaghetti. I went to like, uh, you know, the IGA and uh, I come back and he goes, this is a mirror in here or whatever he had. He goes, this is the number whatever. I didn't even know they numbered spaghetti. I need a, <laughs> they need an effing number nine. I'm like, really? They number this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, But Debbie, uh, they, they, that was started off. That's the only time I ever saw Debbie, where she looked like she, she would have, like, taken me to the woodshed or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but it ended up worked out good because, like, I was sitting in there, and I'm like, when you can guide like I do, the deer, you know, I can show you a deer. You know, they're everywhere. <laughs> you know, those guys were with me today and two 200-pounders because they're just, every, you know, when you know where the, the, the woods and the deer. <laughs> I do myself because I used to work for the tips. And how I'll tell you, because, like, I gauge, I gauge my success on tips, not yeah. on <laughs> so that, that's that for that. That's why you made right. twice as much as Mike, huh? 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike get his sports all lost out moose hunting. and uh, I'm, He come out. Hey, you can't of, go too uh, hard on Mike. He's not here I, to defend yeah. himself. I know, I know, I know. He'll, he'll do it to me son. Yeah. So. Oh, he's going to. I know, yeah. I know he will. I was just joking. Yeah. Mike, Mike and I used to compete for a tip, so. And yeah. he he was he was on par with me all the time, so uh, <laughs> probably probably out competed me, I'm sure. So, uh, well, <clears throat> we appreciate stuff. you coming up again, Garnett. Yeah. yeah, I know everyone else will too. And um, hope your belly heals up quick. Well, I'm going to have his daughter help help her and drag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. She'll. I will make sure she she gets first shot. Yeah, she's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Then you push her out of the way. No, 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 no. But no, you, no, but no, you no. better shoot quick. Yeah, no, hey, that's no, a good way to teach her to shoot no, fast. No, that's no. her problem is she shoots too fast sometimes. Is she? She. That's not sometimes a problem. Sometimes she, yeah. even if she's sitting and it comes out, you know, and instead yeah. of she gets, she gets yeah. like she's ready to go. But anyway, um, I guess I won't help her with that. <laughs> she's looking. She's looking forward to it. But a little update too, just for anyone that there's a lot of people that aren't on Facebook. We did. Uh, we got the lodge finished up and the wedding went off great and and so that was a major bonus here over the last few weeks yeah. since that we was talked a good, like, that wedding was a good time everybody had a great time and I think you yeah. jinxed yourself because I was like I, the whole time when I was thinking about that it's like we'd spent the whole first time talking about Rick and I having everything all our antlers burn up and I'm like oh hey, yeah you, I'm like holy cow he's missing the antlers <laughs> yeah we got lucky he's got a yeah. bunch of buffalo in there or something. Yeah, we got lucky. We were able to recover from it, so the lodge is all back together, looks ready awesome. ready for deer season. Yeah, it looks better than it did. Uh, look, it was looks a good, all, looks awesome. Good freshen up. Thanks. Yep. Um, but anyway, how you got anything else? Yeah, uh, I still got that one open and one room open for the second week of deer. Uh, I had a cancellation for that week. Yeah, that's so. a good week too. Thanks. I like the second week. Yeah, it's like when it really starts rolling. You know, yeah, you got a good chance the, of snow that's and when the bucks start moving around pretty good and. And uh, Thanksgiving week is all filled up now. I had a few for that. That's filled up. So just get that one open. And if anybody's interested. Second week's an awesome week. They're still heavy. You get your 200-pound yeah. deer, buddy. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know about you, but I listened to all these Garnet stories. It's got me pretty fired up for deer season. You can, you got oh, your you rifle can feel ready? it coming. All, yeah. Well, I'm not that ready yet, Garnet. We're not going start, on those start, rules, Well, you're just going to yeah. be ready to shoot. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. target a little yeah. bit yeah no i don't i think we covered it and uh we're supposed to just if you got an onyx uh app stay away from me <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, That's I'll, a lot I'm, of people. i'll give you yeah. i'll give you the coordinates we're not yeah. where to go yeah yeah if, uh, I'll, if you're I'm on the youtube pump. channel like and subscribe uh anything we're doing on there at you see the uh you guys are those selling, shorts. aren't you selling wool too yeah, that's yep. right. We should give that. So, so they're making the packs now. Uh, the website, I think, is almost ready to push the button on the new website, and that's when we'll be able to get the pre-order stuff done on the website. And uh, I know Liz didn't want to get a bunch of phone calls for pre-orders, so we're gonna. That'll be live by any day now. I think the website, and then that'll also correspond with uh, uh, Brian. Our, our editor and social media guy is going to start pushing my films that were in the hunt club out onto the YouTube. Yeah, nice. I, told, I think he's going to try to put one every week. So, Did you see that short, the one moose short? Did you see what it's up to now? No. It just went over 3 million views. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and it's funny. It, it's You can never tell what's going to make a video popular. That one's popular bec- because he let it walk. Yeah, and for whatever reason, it's always been that way. But just because it's the short, I think it gets passed around more. But yeah, wow, it's, nice. It's yeah. uh, yeah. it's getting quite a quite a bit of traffic, and, and a lot of them are Rick's Rick's uh, video there where he, he had the encounter with the doe was was pretty popular too. Yeah, I think I got, that's a, over I got a Rick story that I'm saving for when he's around. Yeah, I'll make sure he's here next time you come. Uh, yeah, Rick or Mike, because I got I got a good one with Rick. Then. Yeah. And All right. You. <laughs> don't don't get going now. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> we got it's I like won't. a wild well, horse. I won't because I won't because it's a good one. It's yeah. not even in this country. Yeah. I won't. And then the <laughs> other thing was uh, quite a few people been inquiring about the jackets and stuff. And those they're gonna start on as soon as the packs. When we get the packs, that's the next thing. And, Look good uh, with that orange on that picture you had there. Looks like the orange uh, 
The capes? The cape one. It looked really cool. Yeah, they're nice because yeah. they're wool capes. So yeah, you it looked got awesome. Your, you got your double layer up on your shoulders, a yeah, double layer of wool looked, to shed the awesome. snow and rain and stuff. But And uh, we uh, we went back over. We got a lot of input down at uh, that hunt stock, and we're going to change up that game pouch a little bit. Um, Timmy was the one driving that a lot, and, he, and him and – I think Bo and Nick, some of the guys, they they rather have that, but they they said really that the zipper pockets don't need to be there because you can get you just open it, you can reach in from inside and get the stuff. So um, that'll save on the stitching cost to keep the price down a little bit too. But so it's going to have the pouch in the back, but you'll access it from inside, and it'll have like two big compartments. It'll be divided in the middle, and then they was going to make a divider on each side like one big enough for a like a water bottle or a you know a filter bottle or something i think it's going to be a five inch pocket and another one on the other side to stick a grunt tube in or whatever so yeah so uh but those those will be be able to be pre-ordered pretty quickly i think and uh and they'll be out here hopefully this month you know we're into september now by the end of the month and then the pants will be next but we're still in hopes we're going to they're telling us we should have everything before deer season, the pants and everything. So it's going good. That's been a long, hard slog and a lot of logistics. Nothing easy about it. No. You know, <clears throat> even just the, you know, you think you got everything rounded up and then just little things you don't think about. Like every jacket, every size is a different length zipper. So right. you think, you know, you're just going to order a few hundred zippers for the front of the jacket. Well, you can't do it that way. you got to figure out how many... Like we're going to order, I think, I can't remember the breakdown, but most people are either large or extra large, so that'll be the biggest bunch probably. I think we're going to do 100. I think we're going to, the first run, we'll do 100, uh, 300 jackets, so it'll be like 100 large, 100 extra large, and then we'll spread up mediums, 2X, and a few 3X, so that'll be the mix. And But so the zippers are all different, so you got to figure that out. I never thought of that until, see, we thought we had everything ready, and then, and then when you get the patterns done and you get to the stitcher and there's all these other things that like, oh, yeah, geez, we didn't know that. So it's yeah. a – we're learning it. But the good thing is is once that's all done, Nothing's when, we need, it. when yeah. we need more, we just got to say we need 300 more, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And we know what there is. You know, we know what we need because it's all in – you know, Chris has got it in the computer now. It's just all there. Order this, order that, whatever. Anyway, not to get long-winded. Yep. So anyways. So anybody getting married, come up here to Power Island Lodge. I can tell yeah. you over here, I was just looking at the tent and the setup. The way he's got that lodge is unbelievable right now. So Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it worked out great. It, yeah. it actually looks better in the front now than it did before. It was a nice nice yeah. upgrade. Yeah. But um, yeah, but we do actually have, uh, we have a few spots. I know I'm pretty sure September's booked up and part of August, but. Um, we do have some availability next year. I think what happened was we had the fire right around the time that a lot of people are Coming, planning and booking yeah. their weddings for the next year. So I think some people thought we were out of business and not be able to do weddings anymore. You can't so. top the looks of the mountains around here when they start turning oh, yeah. colors. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, anybody having a shotgun wedding coming up in the next few weeks, a month or something? No, not this season. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We got He's in the we got two or three year, more yeah. to go, and yep. we actually got one oh, tomorrow. Oh, you're all set this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, next next summer. That's is right. What I'm talking, People book that stuff a year. Ahead. Yeah, that's a that's a year out stuff. But yeah. All right. Well, support our sponsors and uh, get out there and get practicing with your gun and get all your stuff organized and. Go through it and replace the stuff you need. Don't forget to get your woolies. Practice your shooting. Practice your shooting. <laughs> and until next time, good luck on the trail. Hi, everyone. This is Big Woods Bucks team member Mark Sheeran. A lot of you know that I've been working with uh, addicts and alcoholics now for the last 32 years. And one of the things that we just developed, which is very exciting, is the Freedom Model online program. And this program makes it so that you can learn the entire Freedom Model curriculum, all 470 pages of it, uh, through pre-recorded video tutorials that myself and Michelle Dunbar, the other co-author of the Freedom Model, uh, built for you. So you'll be able to learn the entire 
uh, curriculum, how to get over an addiction without AA meetings, without rehab, without endless therapies, without recovery, and you can move on from this problem for good. If you want more information about this, go to online.thefreedommodel.org. That's online.thefreedommodel.org or call 888-424-2626. And if you want that program for 50% off, use code BWB22. That's BWB22. So go to that address, hit the Enroll Now button, use that coupon code, and you'll have a program for the rest of your life. You can use it anytime you want. You'll get all updates. It's a one-time fee, and it's very affordable. And you'll get it for 50% off. BWB22. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a uh, four-season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open all, obviously, through the summer, right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes, all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And, uh, of course, we've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season. So check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time, good luck on the trail.